Hello everybody, it is the 1st of November and I decided, this is Friday of course, tomorrow will be our live stream where I am going to discuss at great depth what I am going to show you tonight. And actually this video will be up tomorrow because I will not be able to get it all done this very evening. But anyway, you should be able to see or get a taste of what's coming Saturday night. So if you're interested in this, make sure you join us tomorrow. It's going to be a lot of fun. 5 o'clock Eastern Time. Now, tomorrow evening, we'll be switching back to Daylight Savings Time. So the following week at 5 o'clock, it'll seem like it's 4 o'clock for you guys. And I don't know how it's going to affect the rest of the world, but I have to stay within that time frame just to make it easier on me anyway. So photography. We shoot with our cameras. We are on the ground. We are on ladders. We are on top of buildings. Or we could be using a drone to capture images from points of view that would normally not be accessible in most cases to us mere earthlings. So today I had the opportunity, although it was a bit chilly out, to shoot some shots, do a little bit of video recording around Nathan's front yard. Again, it's beautiful. The trees are really getting nice and golden, although this year is not as good as previous years. But anyway, I went ahead and shot a few DNGs and I processed one already and I printed it just a few minutes ago. Okay, and here it is. It's printed on Pro Luster, nothing special. I will be doing a bit more printing of these images that I process on slightly better paper. But anyway, I just wanted to test to make sure that this is going to work out. And tomorrow I will show you what this looks like actually as a raw DNG, which is really, compared to this, appalling. It is so flat, the profile for color that is, they call it a profile. It's a flat profile, in other words, a flat look, if you will. And that allows you, because the shadows are filled in, I mean, they are not lacking any detail, and the highlights the same thing. So you can actually expand that dynamic range to the max. And I'll show you how to do that step by step next. We're gonna go over to the computer, and I will take you through the steps I go through in Lightroom. Really the best application for this type of work that I am going to show you. All right, so we'll see you in a couple of minutes over at the computer. Hello everybody, we're back in the computer room and we are in Lightroom and this is what the original image that I show you in print looked like before we edited it. Again, just appalling. It's going to end up looking like this. This is what a little bit of editing will do. But we're going to go ahead and use a different image this time. I took a close-up of that very tree and we're going to go ahead and fix this and print it. First thing we'll do is create a virtual copy because we never want to edit our original. So now we have the virtual copy open. Now what we need to achieve is the widest possible dynamic range that you can extract out of this image. And if we look here at the histogram, you see that we haven't expanded that dynamic range in the shadow area. Actually, I am missing quite a bit. We have gone beyond white in some places, usually the sky area that has absolutely no detail. It's a little bit beyond white. And the way you can see that is by having the clipping warnings activated here and here. This will be black. It will look kind of a blue purple color and bright red for the highlights. So the first thing we will do is we're gonna apply a fix by Anthony Morganti. He is a great landscape photographer and he taught me via video how to do this. We're going to bring our highlights all the way to the left, shadows all the way to the right. We're going to click on the Alt key and adjust the white point by sliding it until you begin to see a hint of detail. Same thing with the black, until you begin to see a hint of detail. And you can see the huge difference that makes. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and correct any kind of curvature. We could have done that in the very beginning. It really doesn't matter when you do it. Remove chromatic aberration. That can happen in some cases. You'll have a little color fringing around certain edges, but this is the most important one. This will apply a specific correction filter or profile for the Anafi 23 millimeter lens. Boom, there you go, it is corrected. It was curvy here, now it's no longer curvy, nice and flat. That is done. Tonight we're gonna discuss this. Be with me at the live stream.
Now we are ready to perform our adjustments. It's going to be quite simple. We have all of this already set. Do we need more contrast? I don't think we do. We're going to apply a little clarity and just take you through the motions here. About 10 to 15% clarity. We're going to apply a little bit of dehaze. That removes any kind of cloudiness in the shadows and really is intended for landscapes. But we're going to go ahead and apply a little bit of that here. Do we need more vibrance? Possibly not. Maybe just 10%. That is all we're going to do. Saturation? Absolutely not. Tone curve? Yeah, we can apply a bit of a uh, S curve here. Not too much. We don't want to increase contrast curve too much. Right there is about right. We're going to come back to the top, get my middle tones and move them to the right a bit. That way we fill the histogram a bit more. That is the most important thing. And I'm going to show you a hint later on in a separate video about the use of the histogram and why you should always use it. Let's go ahead and sharpen this puppy. Now, if I just apply sharpening, let me go ahead and click on the center. If I just go ahead and apply sharpening blindly, I will get a lot of crunching. Every little bit of digital noise will be accentuated even more. We don't want that. We only want the edges to be affected. So we're going to bring it down. We're going to click on the masking slider, click on the Alt key, move it to the right. And as you can see, we begin to isolate the edges and we are neglecting areas here. We don't want to sharpen any kind of a grain or any kind of digital noise. Now we can apply. Now we can apply sharpening. And as you can see, we're not crunching up the image like we did earlier. We're getting a little bit of clipping. So again, as you make adjustments, you may have to go back and readdress your white point on your black point. So we'll bring the white point back down a bit until we got no red in those sky areas. And again, do we have any black areas that need to be addressed? Yes. All right. So now we're good to go. That looks great to me. Now, what about localized color control? Well, this area right here, as well as exposure, areas that may require burning in as we used to do back in the darkroom days, we have a brush here we can just click on, bring that brush over to the image area, adjust it in diameter by using your uh, wheel on your mouse, and just go ahead and paint over areas that you want to affect. So I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly paint over these areas here. There seems to be a little bit of a hot area here. I want to darken that a little bit. Well, as you saw, nothing happened until we click on one of these sliders. And now I am burning in, if you will, the areas that I affected. And I think that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to click on the brush again to deactivate and get out of that mode. I'm going to apply a bit of vignetting. That's just for looks, not necessarily something you absolutely need. But I like to bring the eye into the central portion of the tree. And you can locate that in the effects tab. And we'll just go ahead and bring it to the left. If you bring it to the right, you're going to get a reverse vignetting. We'll just bring it to the left. Not that much, just enough. Just enough to bring the eye to the center, like so. And I think we can go ahead and print this. I have it already preloaded in Lightroom. Again, I have my cell size done. I have zoom to fill. If I don't do that, it's going to allow me to just print the complete image. We're going to go ahead and hit zoom to fill and print it. But what about our settings? Well, we need to go to the page setup, make sure that our driver settings are correct, properties. We're going to use an ICC profile for that paper. This is going to be ProLuster. So matching has to be set to none. And ProLuster is chosen, highest quality. And we're ready to print. Boom. Hit print and you are going to be enjoying a beautiful rendition of this image onto a 13 by 19 piece of paper. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. Very quick, I didn't want to bore you too much with too many details, but that is basically the way you would edit an image shot with any drone that's capable of shooting raw images. So tonight, during the live stream, I will unveil the finished results. So make sure you're there, 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, USA. So we'll see you all tonight. Happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.